FM and 1370 AM. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 10 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. When I first moved to the South, Robin, there were some figures of speech that I wasn't familiar with. And one of them was the result of watching a kid who was misbehaving. And uh, instead of, like, up in New York, you would have said, oh, he's acting out or he's whatever. They said, he's just showing his butt. <laughs> he's just showing his butt. <laughs> just ignore him. He's showing his butt. Oh, my God. And I said, well, I, I don't see the butt. So <laughs> I don't know where that expression comes from. Uh, Dr. Catherine Perlman is on the phone. She has written a book called Ignore It, How Selectively Looking the Other Way Can Decrease Behavioral Problems and Increase Parenting Satisfaction. I uh, one, of, one of the greatest experiences that I've had, and I know you agree with your experience as being a parent. I just loved it. Um, and not, not to put it in past tense, but, you know, when your children are almost 40. It's exactly you know. my children, yeah. <laughs> Yours yeah. is thirty-one, right? You just, you just, uh, well, you're still a parent. I still worry about it. Yeah, you know, they say it never ends, right? Yeah, and it's not just a mom thing, by the way. No, us, it's not. Us, us dads are in the same boat you as dads you. Dads love your children. Uh, Doctor Doctor Perlman is a licensed clinical social worker, a columnist whose syndicated uh, "Dear Family Coach" column appears in the Wall Street Journal and many regional parenting magazines. She's a contributor to the Today Show, Parenting Magazine, Men's Health, CNN, the Huffington Post, and so, such an honor to have her on our little show. Uh, the book is called Ignore It. Dr. Catherine Perlman, good morning, doctor. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I am calling from Southern California. You got up early. 10, nice. 11, 9, 8, 7. It's only 7 o'clock out there. Wow. Wow. Thank you for getting... I sure did. <laughs> um, are you a parent? I am. I have a 10-year-old and a 14-year-old. Do you know... I'm I in the trenches. I don't know if I spoiled my son, but I think he spoiled me because when I hear about some of the horror stories, I think, you know what? I had it pretty easy. He's an adult by now, but, you know, it's just, I, I think some of the things you talk about in your book, I, I was blessed with. I didn't have to worry about some of those things. Well, I do think that, you know, kids are all different. Some have a naturally easygoing temperament. They don't test and provoke as much as others. And others really push us to our limits. Even the same parents can have two very different kids. Um, so I'm glad that you're blessed with a good one. Yeah. Um, but the good news is sometimes the bad behavior shows up, but we can work on it. But as a but as a as a professional, you can help us figure out way like ignoring it, for example. That's like it's almost like a psychological approach, isn't it? It is. It's based on behavioral psychology and the concept of extinction. And the idea is that we don't want to give uh, rewards or benefits to any behavior that we want to see go away. Um, and that's what's basically happening. Kids are whining and complaining and tantruming um, and negotiating because they've learned that all of those behaviors are really effective in getting them something they want or out of something they don't want. Yeah. And so when parents ignore all of that, kids are like, oh, well, that wasn't effective. I might as well not bother with it. <laughs> I like that. And in my intro, I, I referenced the, the expression showing his butt and then and the next thing just just don't just don't worry about it just forget about it i guess that's a brooklyn I, i'm mixing up my north and my south together here but, <laughs> but 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 i think i think it made a difference it made a difference when uh, okay I, I i'm going to tell you where this came from this came from picking watermelons so i was i was really in the south here uh, we're picking watermelons <laughs> and the kid was acting out and he said he's showing his butt and i well i just thought ignoring it was the best thing and, and everybody seemed to get along yeah, you know, I mean, the kids really are trying to get a reaction out of us. Um, sometimes it's even a negative reaction. I mean, you can imagine a teen who's upset they're not allowed to go to a party is going to be very disrespectful, but they want to get a reaction out of us. You know, the kid that's making annoying noises, he wants us to say to stop. And so when they don't get that, they're like, huh. Well, this is no point to this. Like, whoa, I look like an idiot. You know, like I'm picturing the kid in the watermelon patch, like being all silly, and everyone's like, yeah. Anyway, and they're going about their business. The kid's like, oh, okay. Well, that's no fun. So, I mean, it's really effective in teaching kids. Like, yeah, nobody cares. You might as well not bother with it. Uh, you use the word uh, timeout in your book. I know my both my children are almost forty, and uh, that word didn't exist when I was raising them. But whenever there was a problem, I would sit with them and talk it out I never would send them to their room or do anything like that yeah I mean the problem nowadays is I think 
parenting has really changed, and they're really, we're all helicopter parents these days. We're all hyper-involved in our kids' lives. We do a lot of talking, and the kids, it's meaningless to them. What they want to see is action. So when we withdraw our attention, they feel that. When we're going on about why they shouldn't be doing this and that, they're like, "Uh uh-huh, 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 can I get back to playing now? It does not change behavior. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Um, Because they're... So they're so used to having our attention now. Um, it's really different. You know, if I forgot something at home uh, when I went to school, my parents weren't bringing that to me. You know, they weren't they weren't tolerating that. If I forgot it, I forgot it. I'd have to deal with the consequences. Really? Um, if I missed the bus, I was going to be walking to school. You know, p- nowadays parents are not doing that kind of stuff. So I think that, you know, we have to adjust. And sometimes just not providing any attention or any benefit will, is the quickest way. And the kids know right away. They're like, and then as soon as they stop the behavior, we re-engage with the positive. We, we get right back in it and we start, you know, being a parent again. Um, but we just don't want to give them any reward for that behavior. Nice. What about communication? If communication obviously is necessary, then, sh- then shouldn't the things that are being communicated that might push your buttons in, in, as a parent, I mean, shouldn't they still be allowed? Uh, like, should kids still be able to like, say what they want to say? Well, with expression. In, in other words, let's say, uh, uh, let's say your son comes to you and he says, uh, um, the, the, the teacher is so hard on me. I don't know why. The teacher doesn't seem to pick on anybody else but me. And it's almost like the, you, they're looking for your sympathy or something or, or support. I mean, I wouldn't ignore that. I would listen to that. Oh, absolutely. We'd never want to ignore a kid that's got a real problem or a real pain or hurt going on. Absolutely want to give them our full attention. But we do want to ignore the crocodile tears and the tantrum after we say no to something. But, you know, a kid who's got anxiety, who's anxious about school, who's got a real problem with a kid or a teacher, we, we're all in on that for sure. You have a lot of different scenarios in your books with tips and uh, frequently asked questions. That seems to be very helpful. Yeah, you know, I try to provide as many scenarios so that every parent could find their kid in that book. Um, You know, I've been in so many parents' homes. I've seen everything, and we're all dealing with the same stuff. You know, it may look slightly different in your home than versus someone else's home, but um, it's all there. So I try to have scenarios in the car and on the airplane, in public, you know, waiting online at Target. I try to have, you know, um, sleep issues and eating issues and teens and toddlers and, you know, you name it. I really tried to put in the book so that everybody could see that, you know, this could work for them. The book is available online. I found it on uh, Amazon. It's uh, coming. It's today. Today's the release date, and you already got one five-star review, so good for you. Keep it up. I'm sure you'll get plenty plenty more. Um, I have a copy of the book. It's called Ignore It. Call me if you would like the copy that was sent to me. The rest of us will have to go buy it, so I I already found that on Amazon. Do you want to direct this to a different website? Amazon's great. Anywhere you buy books. Um, and you can find out more about me at thefamilycoach.com. Thefamilycoach.com. Okay, thank you. And is uh, uh, giving allowance passe now, or or is it still okay? Oh, I'm a big believer in allowance, but not for chores. Just um, a certain amount of money so they can learn to budget their own money, and then parents don't have to buy money for every frivolous thing a kid wants. Do you hold nice. it back? Do you hold back money if they didn't uh, behave or something like that? Got a bad grade or something? I don't. I don't because then they could decide that they it's not worth it. So it's like, you know, clean your room or you don't get your allowance. They're like, okay, I won't clean my room. Um, <laughs> and then that defeats the purpose. For me, I want to teach them about money. That's like a, I don't want to mix things up. I just want to give them, a, even if it's a small allowance, I want them to learn to budget and save and learn the value of a dollar. If I buy something, it's nothing to them. If they have to save for it, it's a lot more meaningful. So um, I don't want to mess that up by, you know, giving them an opportunity to not get the money and avoid chores. Very good. Nice. Let, let me see if I can give away the book. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Uh, is there a limit on what I can win? You got it. You want the book? <laughs> Certainly I do. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. You got it. Thank you. It'll be waiting for you on uh, on Patsy's desk. Uh, Dr. Catherine Perlman, thank you for being on the air with us today. Good luck with the book. Thank you so much. It you're, was a lot of fun. You're welcome. All right. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. 
Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. I basically told the Security Council, we've talked enough. It's time to get this done. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley on the new sanctions against North Korea for its missile program on another front. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is trying to press allies and adversaries to cut off North Korea from the world economy, to cut off its revenue flows, and to try to force and convince it to give up its nuclear programs and ballistic missile programs. There are existing sanctions. Much of this effort is to try to get the world to even enforce the sanctions that are already in place. Fox's Rich Edson safety experts warning that millions could be at risk now that U.S. officials are dropping plans requiring truck drivers and train engineers to be screened for sleep apnea. The government saying testing should be left to railroads and trucking companies. Fox News, we report, you decide. The Ford Summer Sales Event is in full swing. All right, man. Seven ballparks in seven days. Here we go. I've got my maps. Uh, you don't need them. Huh? I got a nav system. See, you could even pinch to zoom. Look at it. And with available Sync 3 and voice activation.